by uh, actually I'm not very convinced I'm not very uh, uh, you know uh, when I use the mic right like this so it hampers my ability to use my hands freely so <laughs> Right, that impacts my presentation skills, but never mind. I'll, I'll try to adjust. Okay, uh, so so yeah. Uh, basically, uh, like you know, our world is changing, and our world is changing very fast. Right. So this is the uh, papal ceremony in 2005, and uh, and down there it is in 2013. Right. So can you spot spot the difference? Yeah. 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 Within eight years, you know how much how much our lives have changed, right? How much fast paced they have become, right? So there was hardly one phone and that to that flip phone. <laughs> Does anyone use flip phones, right? Does anyone still use those flip phones? <laughs> no, right? So uh, so within within eight years, like you know the the, the way we uh, use technology has changed completely, right? So, since the world is moving so fast, right, all the organizations and enterprises and the companies are looking to, to build software in a better way, right? And they are continuously exploring new ways of, of doing it, okay? um, This is the a projection of the average life of the companies uh, since 1960. So as you can see that uh, the average lifespan of company was around 60 years, right? Uh, and then it has it has gone down and now it is like around 15 years, right? So, but that that means that if you are not changing yourself, you are you, you are going out of business, right? And you will go out of the business pretty fast. And that is this. This data is not just applicable, right, for the companies, but this is also applicable to you as a developer, because if the companies are changing, if the marketplace is changing, and you are not changing, what will happen? Out. <laughs> Out. Right. What happens to to the stagnant water? What happens to stagnant water? It stinks. Yes, it gets stale. Right. So, so water has to be refined, right, in order to, to be fresh. So, uh, basically, the point over here I'm trying to make is that you have to continuously invest in yourself. Right. Keep upgrading yourself. Keep looking for new opportunities, new tools, technologies, and things like that. Right. Uh, because because the the marketplace is changing very fast. Yes. All right. Uh, some more examples. Um, uh, Kodak. Uh, how many know that Kodak actually invented digital photography? Yeah, only two people. Three people. Right? Kodak actually uh, implemented uh, uh, digital photography, right? and despite the that was in 1975, right? That part. But their executives thought that it will it will disrupt their their uh, physical hard copy printing business, and that's why they, they never took it seriously. Right. The impact was that they, they basically went into bankruptcy. Right. Uh, similarly, Blockbuster Video. So they had the opportunity to buy Netflix multiple times. Even the CEO of, of Netflix went to them. And and uh, told them to to buy Netflix in fifty million dollars, right, some years back. Right. And what is the result? That Blockbuster eventually shut down their doors with one point one billion dollars in loss. Right. And current valuation of Netflix is thirteen billion dollars. Yeah. So Netflix has been there for how long? Not far, far away, right? Um, third example is Borders. Of book and music, right? So their their competitor was like uh, not competitor, but one of their uh, service provider was Amazon, right? And uh, but they never took uh, like uh, ebooks seriously, right? And the biggest mistake they made 
was that they, they outsourced their outlying, uh, online business to Amazon, which at that time was a like, very small, small company. But from there, right, um, uh, Bada Group basically went back to bankrupt, and I don't have to tell you what Amazon right, where it is now. Um, last example, Nokia. Right? Everyone used Nokia phones. Right? Yes, most sturdy phones available in the market until a few years back. And and now like you know Microsoft has basically after taking over Nokia, right, they have virtually written off 7.2 billion dollars uh, in, in investment they made in Nokia. Right? The single operating system which was like you know the number one operating system right until a few years back. Like totally wiped out out of the market. So that's the pace at which our world is changing. Uh, so this is the comparison, right? Here the first Apple iPhone was introduced, right? So from there, within just two years, they were running in parallel. Another two years, right, there was a significant right, gap. Right? Another two years completely out of business, right? So within a span of four years, right, this all happened, right? And this goes on and on, Blackberry, yeah? Everyone knows about Blackberry. So, so what, what, what should we do, right? Uh, there's something called like disruptive innovation, right? And that's what Amazon did. So when Amazon started, Right, they were like you know they were actually shipping books for Border Bookstore, right? So they were sending and shipping the physical copies. Now, um, uh, sometimes they didn't eat. They, they thought that it is not going to run very well. So they invested heavily in Kindle. And today, within just two or three years, right, the the number of ebooks sold have sold much much more than their physical books being sold. So this is this is a perfect example, a classic example of like investing your your uh, yourself in disruptive innovation. Right? Where you have a steady stream of things but, but you are investing in something which will basically hit your main line of business. But actually it is going to give you much much more. Agree with me? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, as as developers, like you know, what what you should uh, do in order to to keep uh, uh, in pace with uh, with the changing uh, uh, market market technologies, right? So the first thing, obviously, is the technical excellence. Right? Always, you have to be on the top of the game. Yes. Right. So, how many versions of PHP has they have released within? In the last two or three years, how many versions they have released? Yeah, in total. So they are going to release PHP 7? Yes, they are going to. Yeah, so there are major releases, and in between, there are, there are so many releases. Yes. And 14. 14 releases, so within the last few years, right? So what if, if you are still working on PHP 2 or 3? Yeah. Can you can you still sit on, sit on your, your same old technology and, and uh, ask your company to pay for you? Yeah, right? So always, always invest yourself in technical excellence, right? And how are you going to invest? Right, always um, uh, certifications, courses, like there's, there's a lot of information available on the internet, right? The world is open to you through the internet, right? So you can just, with a, with a uh, click, one click, you can, you have uh, the information across, across the globe, which is available to you, okay? And always set your aim high, okay? Keep raising your bar. Right, so if you have achieved something, so like someone told me that like uh, uh, success is not destination, it is a 
It is a success is a journey. Yes, and you have to continuously keep on moving. Uh, second thing is that um, upfront versus evolving design. Right? How do you guys do your design? Do you do the upfront design first or your design evolves for the period of time? Anyone? Anyone designers, architects? Yeah, I'm a designer. I mean, yeah. I, I don't get the question. So do you do the upfront design, like, you know, for the whole application first, like the architecture design? Uh, well, we, uh, we don't do that. We just uh, uh, kind of like progressive enhancement. Yeah. Something like that. Evolve. With the agile idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but there are pitfalls uh, for both of them. So you have to be careful. Try to, try to, like, you know, because if you are totally going in an evolving method, right, so there's a risk that that your your design will never get a complete shape. True. Right? Uh, but if you are doing the upfront design first, right, there's a risk that you are spending too much amount of time on the design when the requirements are not clear. Yes. Right? So, so you need to take, you, you have to uh, like see, like, you know, uh, how you're going to go about your design. Next one is, which I would like to stress on, is the, the test automation. Okay. Um, uh, do, you, do you really automate your, your application testing? How many of you are actually automated? 50%? How about others? No idea, but it's test automation. Yeah? So basically, test automation is um, like, you know, uh, especially for your regression testing. So you have an existing application, right, and, and you want, you're developing something, and you want to ensure that whatever you are making now is not going to have any impact on whatever is there earlier. Okay, so so basically, when you, when you are going agile, do invest time in automation of your test scripts. Okay, then automate uh, UI testing. Being web developers, right? Uh, anyone uses uh, Selenium? Yes, is that a good tool? Not really. What 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 else do you use? Yeah. Yeah. That is with any tool in <laughs> So so yeah, but the idea is that there are other tools that are also available. Like Selenium is uh, is the one of is one of the tools right for UI testing, but that is very very important. Uh, refactoring, right? Continuously refactor your code. How many of us can do that? Only few. Only few. Tell me honestly, do you really, really refactor the code, or do you really refactor the code or towards the end of the project? Yes. Right. Huh? Not really, then why are you smiling? <laughs> okay, so my suggestion would be that you need to uh, have a look at your code when you are developing it rather than when you have actually developed it fully because making any changes uh, to, to your code after you have written thousands and thousands lines of code, it will be very difficult for you to refactor. Yes, it will. It will be very. It, it will. It will have a, a higher amount of risk, right? Because uh, when you are changing something, right, you are opening the system for, or you are encouraging more defects to come in the picture. Okay, and at that time, you might not have time to test your system fully. Yes, so try to do the to to refactor your code uh, as as you are moving along. Rather than keeping it towards the end of the 
of the project. Yes. Don't wait for your project lead to come in and tell you once after he does the code review. Right? That no, this you can remove and this you can do it better and, and things like that. Yes? And it basically reduces a lot of technical debt. I think in the previous session also we heard about technical debt. Yes? So this really helps in, in reducing the technical debt. Okay? Um, another tool is uh, continuous integration. Right? So when you are going agile, right, continuous integration really helps. So what, what we do uh, in our um, organization is that um, as soon as uh, someone like checks in the code, right, automatically, right, uh, after he, check, he or she checks in the code, right, all the regression test scripts are basically being run. Right, and they are checked against the whole code base. Right, and if everything passes, we automatically deploy it to the to the UAT and uh, other other places. So, so we don't have to manually go and basically deploy. And since we are doing web development, I think you know it's still very easy to automate your deployment. Is that so? Right, you might have certain rules for the production. Right? If you can automate your production environment as well, nothing like that. Okay, but if not, then other environments you must do the continuous integration. Up to and less pre prod. Right? And it ties up that ties up with your uh, regression testing as well, like you said, right? Because um, when you are automating your regression test scripts. Right, and it helps you to achieve your continuous integration. Okay, so everything fits fits in together. Right? Any any questions so far? Yeah, we're going good. Right. Uh, the next is test driven uh, development (TDD). Right. What it says is that, like you know, you should uh, again invest heavily into uh, yeah, into testing. Right, but you write your scripts even before you start writing the code. Okay? I know it's very hard right, to write all the test scripts and, and run it like you know before even you uh, you have written the code. Right? We are not accustomed to that kind of style of working. Right? But I would still suggest is at least you know create your test plan right before you start writing. Right, plan your which parts of, of testing you are going to do, how you are going to do, right, and, and things like that. And if you can create some generic scripts which can help you, right, uh, give better clarity of your code, please do so. Okay. Next one is uh, collaboration, right? So up till now, I talked more about. Um, uh, like the technical aspects of it, right? Now I'm going to talk more about the behavioral aspects of it, right? So when you are doing uh, uh, web development or any development, right? These, um, all these are going to help you a lot. Okay. So collaboration is the number one. Even the small children know how to collaborate, right? So we as biggies, right, should should automatically know how to how to collaborate. Yeah. Uh, so there are there are two types of collaboration I'm going to talk about is uh, like the collaboration right across like vertical collaboration and then there is horizontal collaboration right what do you mean by vertical collaboration vertical col collaboration means collaborating all the way up to the customer right through the hierarchy right like you are developer senior dev team lead or server manager. And and your VAs up to the customer, right? Bring bring him to the table, the actual customer, right? Ask him to test the product along with you, rather than waiting till the end, right? Once you put your code in the UAT phase, what happens then? Once you put your code into the UAT phase, your your project in the UAT phase, what is the first reaction? From the user, generally, 
Yeah? What does this mean? A lot of surprises. Yes? No idea. Right. What, what, what users do? Do you get a lot of change requests in your interface? A lot of changes from the users. No, this is not working. That is, that is not working. This should change. Right? So, so you have to work extra hard during your interface? Yes? Yeah? So basically, there are a lot of surprises during the UAT phase because we haven't verified the product with the, with the end customer earlier. Right? So try to bring him uh, closer right? uh, and, and try to uh, deliver iteratively right? and also verify it with the, with the end user and the customer. That will avoid and, and eliminate a lot of surprises towards that. Okay. <clears throat> and then horizontally. Horizontally means right amongst your peer group. How you are collaborating amongst your peer group. That is also very important. Right? Generally what happens is we are working in our own silos. Right? This is my work. I have to do. Right? And once I'm done with this, I go back home. I don't care what others are working on. Yes? Is this our approach? Generally? <laughs> right? If not, then great. Right? But if yes, then you need to uh, rethink. Okay? Because this is, this is uh, once you start collaborating better, right, you are going to uh, create a better software and also a healthier work environment for yourself. Uh, then keep it simple, right? Keep it sim simple in the sense that um, if, if, if any work looks too complex uh, to you, right, then break it down. That's all. Yes? Once you break it down, start with something which will really work, which will, you can really showcase. So it can be like, you know, one page with one grade, right? So start, start working with that. Okay? If you are trying to uh, achieve everything, right? You will not, you might not uh, go into that, right? So always uh, break down the things, right? Make it simple, right? You are going to achieve much more uh, better results in your work. Okay. Most important, um, retrospect. So let me tell you a short story. So I was uh, basically uh, doing volunteer work for the Southeast Asia Games uh, recently and over there um, basically I was uh, volunteer for the media relation officer right where we were managing the, all the media on the Indian side. Okay? So the, we went in there first time, the first day and and the whole team was new, we never, we never met uh, like, you know, before in our lives. Right, so we, we didn't know like you know uh, how, what, how we going to work. Right, we didn't have any experience about uh, media relations and so on and so forth. Right, so we, we we managed to do whatever we could do on day one. Right, but we felt that there is a gap. Okay, so towards the end of the day, right, we all came together, sat in there, right, and then listed out the things which we can do better. Yes, we made a note of it and assign each and every individual uh, uh, kind of task right, which they need to do. Okay. And once we did that, right, it was just like 15, 20 minutes uh, uh, like, you know, duration of meeting. Right. And, and with that, spending 15, 20 minutes itself, right, the day two and day three was very, very soon. Okay, because we as a team, Right, iron out all the issues which we were facing, right, and then divided our tasks as well. So there was there was not one single person who was actually facing the issues and, and tackling the issues. Right. So there it was a joint effort. Right. So that that's what uh, retrospect does. And it is if you talk about Vijay, it is the single most important uh, tool in agile to 
but irrespective of which I, if you are doing like work for method as well, if you are doing your retrospect properly, right, you are going to uh, gain much more. Normally, do you do, you do um, um, uh, we, we normally call it as like, you know, uh, project review, right, which happens after the project, right? How useful is that after the project completes? Yeah, anyone done did the project review? We document all the findings. So, yeah, there's many things that we talked in the project review about the challenging ways and also the, also the budget and the expenditure of the, the cost to run the, the project as well. So, yes, of course, there are some improvement ideas in the project after that. We the new yeah. So, so you basically do it after the project. Yes. When your project has already overrun, right? It has overshot the budget. Right. The damage has already been done. Yes. And probably, like when you go to the next project, right? You might not even look at the document and the takeaways you you have documented during the last project and you still make the same mistakes, right? So my, my suggestion to you is that do these, uh, these project reviews like along with when you are doing the project. Okay, we call it in HR, we call it as retrospect meeting, right? We do it like after every sprint, right? So sprint is generally one to two weeks. So after every two weeks, the team is is coming together, right, and talking about what went well, right, what are the areas of improvement, right, and what should be like, uh, really stopped. With. Okay, so spending that half an hour to one hour, like every two weeks or three weeks, is really going to help. Okay. Next point is uh, be courageous. We, we always fear, but what do we fear? In your, in our, not like we fear tiger or lion or those, those wild animals. But when we are in a company, in an organization, whom do we fear? Anyone? You don't fear at all. Huh? The boss, managers. Who else? Customer? Deadline. Deadline? <laughs> Losing the job. Huh? Losing the job? <laughs> yes. So we all have our, our own fears. Right? But I tell you honestly right, that not telling something and not raising your voice has much more negative impact on your career right, than being honest, being transparent, right, actually builds trust. Okay, whether it is a customer, whether it's your boss, right, how many of you have taken like sick leaves? Have you ever taken sick leaves? How many of you have ever really taken a sick leave, right, but went to a movie or <laughs> Yes? And, and what did your boss find it out? Yeah? Boss always knows, right? Where you think you are going. Okay. They have been through the same cycle themselves, right? So, so they know. Try to, and this breaks the trust. So, so um, honestly, yes, I, I, like, you know, one of the uh, key things which can be highlighted that, that small lies basically break the trust. Small lies. Uh, between your uh, within your team members, small lights when you are uh, uh, providing your status update. Right? When the boss comes to you and asks, "What is the update?" Sixty percent done. Next day, seventy percent done. Yes, that's how you get the status, right? Next day, eighty percent done. Boss almost done. I'll give you in the evening, right? 
when he when he goes and checks checks the board, very very little has been done. Yes, because you are you are just sitting on the issues and not highlighting them right, because of this fear, and that breaks the trust. Okay, so so please be courageous. Raise your hand. Right? And and when uh, one one more thing, like you know, um, when boss comes to you and and tell you, right? No, you have to you have to get this done. Right? You know it will not you will not be able to meet the deadline. What do you say at that time? Huh? Impossible. Do you really say impossible? Yes, yeah. I will try my best. <laughs> I will try my best. Yes, but 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 at the core of your heart, you know that you will not be able to meet the deadline. But you are not courageous enough to say no, right? Because you fear, you fear your job. But in the end, when you are saying that I will try, you are giving a very positive message to the other person. And the boss will come and say that where is my work? Says no, I I couldn't do it. But you said I will try my best. <laughs> this no, and that no. and that. <laughs> and, 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 and probably, like you know, your boss has done the same with the customer. <laughs> yes. Just imagine it. Imagine the amount of damage which has been done across the board. Right. So, so please, please stop doing that. <laughs> Uh, if you are if you are saying no, but you can always come up with like alternates, right? Like we cannot do this, we cannot do this whole chunk. But can we deliver this much? This looks more realistic. I will definitely be able to give it, give you this much, right? And then you commit to that and deliver that. That would be much more beneficial. Agree? Right. Uh, next point is like, especially for the managers, uh, when they are planning, right? What they are saying? Sources. I have five resources with me, and they are going to work for me for one year, right? And within one year, I'm going to deliver the complete project for you, right? And at the end of the day, right? You have 10 or 12 resources and still you are unable to deliver the project. Right? And I'm assuming that there has been no change in requirements. Right? So we have taken the things to a certain level. Are, are we resources before that? Are we are we resources? <laughs> so just just renaming is is not enough, right? I may call them resources, I may call them people, but underlying, you know, I'm not changing anything, right? Not all people are equal, yes, but they still are important to the project. If you start treating people as people, right, you will be able to get more realistic estimates. Right? And when you are getting more realistic estimates, you are going, there are high chance, very high chance that you are going to deliver the project on the committed deadline. Okay? So, especially for the managers, please stop saying uh, resources, right? Uh, start using people, that's, that's more humane, right? Rather than like, you know, uh, treating people as commodities. Yes, as machines, right? I'm going to give them this much amount of work and they are definitely going to produce it, right? And then what happens? Like last day of production, putting into into the release, right? The developer calls for a sick leave. <laughs> yes, after the release, definitely on sick leave, right? Because 
because they know that there are, there are a lot of issues and, and then the story will start falling. Right? <laughs> Not so that. <laughs> right? So, so, so yeah. Software is built by people. It is not built by resources. Right? How much automation, how much, uh, like, you know, uh, tools we talk about still, right? the software is still built by, by people. Okay? And not all people are equal. Right? And, and equal in the sense, not in, the, in their IQ or anything like that, but yes, like, you know, they are at different level because because they haven't had that kind of experience. Right? Once they have that kind of experience, they might be might be smarter than they are. Okay. Working software. Right? I, I I highlighted this point earlier as well, but I don't mean to stresses stresses uh, stress uh, this again. Right. So let's say um, um, let let's talk about these phones. Right. So, if, if uh, the project is that you have to build a phone, right? you have to design and build a phone, a smartphone, right? and uh, the customer has given you the specifications that you are going to build this phone like, you know, with 500 features. Now, instead of uh, giving the phone, right, what, what if you, are, you produce a very nice 1000 page documentation about this phone and, and explain in detail all the features about this phone and give this thousand page document to the user. What will be his reaction? What will be your reaction? You ask for phone, right, and I give you that one thousand page documentation. Are you ever going to read it? No way. Instead, Right, instead, right, if what, what can I do? I ask you, like, you know, that what are the top two features in your phone, right, which you, which you desperately need, right, which is the most valuable features. Calling and text, yes, I build those features first and then give it to you with a very lightweight documentation, right, which explains about how to use this, this phone. Right, with these two features and then incrementally build on the documentation and incrementally build on the features. Right. At least I have validated the basic design with my user. Right. The user has much more confidence that this project is going to succeed. You yourself has much more confidence because you know that my design is correct. At least the basic design is correct. Right? So, the truest measure of progress is the working software, right? Not the numbers. We always keep on making the numbers. Worse, what we how we uh, uh, give our status report: red, amber, blue, and green. Yes, solid matters, right? Red, amber. Have you seen those reports? My project is red, my project is green. So up until eight months, the project was green. Suddenly during the UAT phase, it becomes red. Okay, not good. Right? Because we haven't validated, we haven't validated the working software. This picture explains everything. My vision of team is like this, that, uh, you know, uh, the team should be able to support the person. Because at, at any time, like, you know, one or two uh, team members need support. They might be having their personal issues, their family problems, X, Y, Z, right? So in that case, if the team is there to support that person, you will never leave them, will you? Uh, Stuart Chip, I'll just quickly run through um, in this slide. So, right? so Stuart Chip says that you need to leave the things better than they uh, they were. Okay, and that this this principle you can take and apply like you know in your lives and in, in anywhere you are 
you are working or or you are basically uh, in your home or anywhere. Basically. Right. So try to see like you know how you are going to make the things better and work towards that. Uh, feedback very important again. Okay. Right. Be courageous to give feedback and if you receive feedback, try not to take it on your ego. You, you feel sometimes very bad, right? Why this guy is like giving me feedback? So please don't do that. Please take it in a positive way and try to work towards that. But giving and taking feedback is very important. Right? Uh, there is a model situa uh, situation, behavior and impact. If you want to know more about it, then I can take it off. Uh, root cause, right? I think Kiro can <laughs> explain it better than me, right? So, uh, but but yes, the the point is that whenever you uh, face a problem, try to address the underlying issue. Whenever you get a bug in your system, try to find what actually it is causing the bug, right? Most of the times, what we do is we try to do patching, right? We just just fix it. We just do a very dirty fix and leave it there which basically uh, creates more bugs and more problems for you in the long run, right? And, and that's why, like, you know, you, you take a sick leave on after the interaction day, because you know that uh, the customer shouldn't click on that button, right? If that clicks on that button, my, my website will go down, right? Um, co-location, right? Again, uh, important, right, but not mandatory for for the job, right? because our world is distributed, our lives are in different locations, right, but but more you are co-located, the better benefits you are going to going to get, right, uh, when you're going to job. Uh, documentation, I think I've already covered a part of it, that minimize the number of documents you are going to create. But whatever documentation you are uh, creating, that should be live documentation. Right? We create BRD, LLB, TLD, HLD, I don't know, so many documents we, we prepare. And then we put it in a nice cabinet called SharePoint, right? which no one looks at it. Right? So that is a total waste. So please try to create uh, live documentation, right? which is useful. Uh, Blade programming is another concept where, like you know, you don't work individually, right? But you work as a pair, right? So that whatever code you are writing, you always have, like you know, uh, two pair of eyes looking at it, and they can spot the things. Other person might have a better understanding or a different perspective, not even but better understanding, but different perspective about the same thing, and he might spot or give you a bit. A very good suggestion that you know if you if you do it this way or this way then it might be much better. Right? So this is another way to improve quality right? and uh, trust in, uh, in, in the team. Sustainable pace, right? Please don't overcome it, right? Or underestimate the tasks. Again, it ties back to the honesty and all those things, right? Generally, what happens, boss comes and then you don't say no and then try to take whatever is coming, right? And in the end, you break the trust when you are able to do that. So the key messages are, uh, do not limit term to technology, right? There are other behavioral aspects which I have just covered, which are equally important when you are going to going the child. Uh, expand adoption boundaries. Uh, Non-technology uh, teams also get benefit, and increase, it increases the buying and reduces risk. Okay. Uh, these are the photo credits, and if you have any questions, please do ask. I'm still here, like you know. So, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much.